Hello friends, welcome to my channel and in this video I am going to continue the series that I have started of the Indian architecture. So in the previous first part I have talked about, uh, I have started with the ancient Indian architecture and that I have talked about the hyper art and architecture. So in this video I am going to talk about the modern art and architecture. So let's get started. So we see that after Harappan civilization, the another civilization which came mostly known as modern civilization. So in modern art, there were two initiatives. One is known as the court art and the other is known as the popular art. The court art was basically the court initiative in which there were three main uh, things that were focused upon. Palaces, pillars and stupa. And in the popular art, we see the individual initiative in which we come across caves, potteries, and sculptures. So you can remember this as a shortcut, guys. Like here, we find PPS that is in quotes, quotes initiative, and in popular art, we find CPS. Okay, this is my innovative shortcut. So you can remember by that, like caves, potteries, and sculptures, and here, palace, pillars, and stupas. Okay, so, so PPS and CPS. Now we will be covering all this thing one by one. So in the court art, the first one is palaces. So the modern empire was the first powerful empire to come to power in India. We know that before uh, modern empire, we have uh, 16 Mahaj and Pandas which fought among themselves and among them modern empire Empire, like this emperor, uh, this modern uh, kingdom was uh, the winner. So they established the kingdom which was known as the modern empire. So that's why it is the first more, most powerful empire of the India. And its capital was at Patliputra and palaces at Kumbra, that is in modern day Patna, were created to reflect the splendors of the modern empire. Okay, now the palace of Chandragupta Maurya was inspired by the Achaemenid palaces at uh, Iran. So uh, it, these palaces were basically inspired by the Iranian palaces. Palaces of whom? Chandragupta Maurya. And who was the principal material being used? Magasthenes described the palace as one of the greatest creation of the mankind. So Magasthenes, uh, who once who came to India, uh, after visiting India, he wrote a book. So in his book, he has described it as the greatest creation of the mankind. It was that huge and that splendorous you can make out from this statement. Similarly, Ashoka's palace at Kumbhar was a massive structure. So similarly, as Chandrugup Mora's palaces was uh, very uh, magnificent. Similarly, Ashoka palace was also a massive structure. It has a high central pillar. It was a three-story wooden structure. It was a three-story structure and the palace were, uh, walls were decorated with cravings and sculptures. So palace was a three-story and it was decorated with cravings and sculptures. Now coming to pillars. So during the Ashoka, the inscription on the pillars used as a, at the time the, of Ashoka, we have seen, like we have come across a lot of pillar inscriptions, inscriptions on the pillar. So that time, basically, uh, the pillars were used basically for the three purpose. The first one is its symbol of the state. The second one is to commemorate a battle victory. And the last one is to propagate imperial summon as well. So these are the three purpose why the pillars were used. Now coming to next like uh, on an average of 40 feet height, the pillars were usually made up of chuna sandstone and comprised of shaft and capital. So pillars were basically made up of chuna sandstone, chuna sandstone and they comprised a shaft and a capital. What is shaft and capital? I will be explaining you now. The long shaft from the base and was made up of a single piece of stone or monolith. So this is basically the shaft, shaft and it is made up of single piece of stone which is called monolith. On the top of it lays, lies the capital which was either lotus shaped or the bell shaped. So on the top of it you can see something like that. Like 
I'm just drawing a rough diagram to get the idea. There is something like lotus or the bell shape, which is called capital. It is capital, which is lotus or the bell shape. The bell shaped capital was influenced by the Iranian pin. Above it, there was a circular or rectangular base. So above this capital, you can see a rectangular base, something like that, known as abacus, on which the animal figure was placed. This is abacus. Abacus. And above this, there was one animal figure. You can draw some animal like lion or something like that. There was some animal figure placed. So, so this is basically how the pillar looked like. This is animal animal figure so there was shaft which was uh, made up of single uh, stone single uh, like uh, made up of uh, junior sandstone and comprised of shaft shaft okay this is a shaft and then uh, uh, single sorry shaft is made up of single piece of a stone uh, with, uh, generally junior sandstone and then above it there was a capital and then we see we have abacus and then above this had the animal uh, animal figure so example of this is in Champaran, in Bihar, and in Varanasi, in Sarnath Pillar. Sarnath Pillar, we see that, and uh, uh, other is Lorian Nandagar Pillar in Champaran. These both are the examples. So now moving next to the stupas. This is the last one of the uh, court initiative. So stupas were basically the burial mounds prevalent in India from the Vedic period. So stupas were nothing but the burial moons within stupa relics and ashes of dead were kept so uh, stupas in stupas generally the relics and the ashes of the dead were kept during the period of ashoka the art of a stupa reached its climax so whenever somebody asked like what was that climax during the period of ashoka so it was stupas so the core of stupa was made up of the unburnt brick while the outer surface was made up of the burnt brick. So the core is made up of unburnt brick and the outer surface, outer surface is burnt brick which were then covered with a thick layer of plaster and after that it is covered with a thick layer of plaster. The Medi and the Toran were decorated by wooden sculptures. So stupa has one Medi and the Toran. I will show you this thing and you can even find the figure in the little figure in my book. I will show you this in the later video. The Medi and the Toran. Torans and basically the gateway are decorated with the wooden sculptures. So uh, gateways are decorated with wooden sculptures. Devotees walk around the production of path or ambulatory passage as a token of worship. So in the stupa, there is uh, the stupa is, is this is basically called the Pradakshira path. And here are basically the gateways, which is called the Torans, like this. So example is the Sachi Stupa in the Madhya Pradesh, which is most famous of the Ashoka Stupa. And Piprava Stupa in the Uttar Pradesh is the oldest one. So Piprava in Uttar Pradesh is the oldest Stupa. And the Sachi in Madhya Pradesh is quite famous. And the location of the nine Stupas built after the death of Buddha are Rajgriha, Vishali, Kapila Vastu, Alakappan, Ram Garam, Veta Pinda, Pava, Kushinagar, and Pipliwana. I may not pronounce this name, I may not have to pronounce this name correctly, but you can read this name from here. Uh, the location of the nine stupas built after the death of Buddha. These were the nine places. Now moving to the individual initiative that is popular art. The first one is the cave architecture. So this period saw the emergence of rock cut cave. So during the modern period, we see basically there was a prevalence of rock cut caves. Like a big rock was cut into to form the architecture like a cave. During the modern period, these caves were generally used as viharas, that is the living quarter of the Jain and the Buddhist monk. So these caves, rock cut caves, were used as the viharas, which is known, uh, which is the home uh, living quarters, you can say, of the Jain and the Buddhist monks. The caves during modern period were marked by highly polished finish of the interior wall and decorative ga gateway. So these caves has highly uh, polished finish, and the interior walls are decorative. Sorry, highly polished finish of the interior wall. Interior walls are highly polished finished and gateways are quite decorative. Example are Barabar and the Nagarjuni caves in Bihar. 
were formed during the time of Ash Ashoka and his grandson. Okay, now moving next to sculptures and portraits. These are the last two of the uh, popular like individual initiative. We see the last second one is sculptures. So sculptures were used primarily for the decoration of stupas. So the use of uses of sculpture during the Mughal period was basically for the decoration of the stupas. We have seen in the previous slide like the stupas, uh, like. We used to decorate uh, with stupas. Like here we have seen. Uh, so uh, sculptures are used for decorative purpose. We have seen over here. Like uh, the core of the stupas is very okay. Wooden sculptures. Yeah. The Medi and the Turans were decorated with the wooden sculptures. Here it is written. So uh, it is saying about that only. Like the sculptures are used primarily for the decoration of the stupa in the Torans and in Medi, an aspect form of religious expression. Two of the famous sculptures of the modern period are those of Yaksh and Yakshani. So the two famous uh, sculptures of modern period were Yaksh and Yakshani. These are very quite famous sculptures of the modern age. They where uh, uh, they were objects of worship related to three religions, Jainism, Hinduism, and Buddhism. It is talking about Yaksha and Yaksha. Now coming to the poetry, the poetry of the modern period is generally referred to as the modern black polished wear. So in the modern period, the poetry sphere referred as modern black, modern black polished wear. And we have seen in the previous slide that in the Harappan civilization, uh, the portraits are red and black. Portraits uh, we have seen there, and here it is northern black forest. They were characterized by black paint and highly luscious finish and were generally used as luxury items. So, here the use of the pottery is as a luxury item. They have often been referred to as the highest level of pottery. So, they have they are so magnificent, so grand, I and mean, in their architecture and their look that uh, this is called the highest level. So these are basically the art and architecture of the modern age, guys. I have explained you everything. And in the next video, I will be coming, coming up with the postmodern architecture. So this is the end of the video, guys. Till then, keep watching. And if you have any doubt, any query, then mention in the comment box. And do like this video and subscribe to my channel and share to your friends as much as you can. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching.